If you've watched one of my YouTube videos recently, you know that I've had a few custom panels made by a company called Front Panel Express. I've decided to do this video from the feedback that I've received from a few viewers that really weren't sure on how to order one of these panels. Now, if you go to my website at rvproject.com, if you go to the resource menu and then scroll down to panel templates, all of the templates that I've designed for any of the projects I've done in rvproject.com are on this single page. And as you scroll down, there's the obligatory disclaimers and notes and such. And then you get into each of the projects that I've done templates on. And as I do future projects, I'll put them on this page as well. And as you see here, this is for the Ford E450. And there's a link back to the project page. And this is actually the construction article. And now back to the template page, you'll see a download button and also an approximate cost when I did the project. And one thing about the costs, even though these are a little expensive, I think the costs are quite reasonable because this is a custom panel that is a one of a kind. And if you go anywhere else, you're probably going to get a $75 to $100 setup fee, even if they will do a quantity of one. You know, you could have three, $400 wrapped up into your project. And since these are custom panels, you just can't go to a website and order them directly. So there's a little work involved, and that's what I'm going to show you here as we scroll down and look at some of the other panels. Just real quickly, here are the Silent Eye panels, the Undersink dimmer panel, the breakout box for my 7-pin trailer, my battery charger monitor, and now we finally get to the EMS-50 flush mount panel, which is one of the more popular ones, along with, as we scroll down a little further, the shims for the rvlock.com door locks. The first thing you need to do though is you have to come back to the top and click on this icon and that will send you to Front Panel Express. Now this is the company that actually does the machine and they're based uh, in Washington in the USA and along the top here we've got a download section and download Front Panel Designer as well as download manuals. And if we click on the front panel designer, and since I'm on a Mac, it's prompting me to download the designer for a Mac, but you have options for Windows, Linux, or Mac. And by the way, the designer is no cost. It's a free product, and you do everything within the designer itself, including uploading a template, which is what we're gonna do. Or you can design a panel from scratch, and you can order a panel directly from the designer. Now, if you don't have a Windows, PC, Mac, or Linux, can you still order one? I'm going to guess that if you download the template file and send an email to Front Panel Express telling them you found this on the internet and it's okay for you to obtain it, you just don't have any way of ordering it, I wouldn't be surprised if they wouldn't accommodate you. I mean, they're a pretty responsive company and they should be able to just take that file and build it for you. I've not asked them about that, but, you know, that's one option you could try. Okay, let's presume that we've downloaded this, and we're back at our page, and we want to go down, and we're just going to try this one. This is the template for an E450 dash panel, which would go into here. One of the first ones I did, actually, and it was $39.95 three years ago when I had it made. So we're going to download it, and... Depending on your browser, you may be able to launch Front Panel Express right from here, but we're going to save the file. And then in my downloads section, I've got the template here. So I'm just going to double click on that. Now the Front Panel Designer opened up along with the template and we're getting a warning stating you created this panel in a old version of the software and we just had to make some updates to make it compatible. No worries, everything's okay. Here we go. This is the panel in the designer. And if all we want to do is order this, we don't have to do any other changes. We would just go up to the top line menu, click on order, and you can start ordering program or you can order the current front panel. So then it puts this in your basket. $39.84, so the price hasn't changed much in three years. Lead time, standard five business days. And if you need something rushed, then of course they'll charge you more. Click on this arrow, then you put your personal information in here. Click on it again. Here's your billing information and credit card. And they don't offer PayPal, unfortunately. 
And you click on it again and you'll see that the estimated delivery date is uh, Friday the 8th. And this is probably in the Washington state area. So if you live on the East Coast, it'll probably be extended out a few days. Of course, we're getting error here because we've not added all that information. But you'll see how this works. This is just standard fare for internet type stuff. So if you want to make modifications, feel free to do so. I mean, it's not going to bother me at all if you want to take rvproject.com off here and put something else on. And so if you double click that, a little preview comes up for each object. And let's change this to my favorite fictitious electronics company. And you'll see that it is blocked a little bit here. So if we move it down, you can see where it's open. There you go. Now, if we go up to the menu and you look at this two little coins icon, if we click on that, you'll see kind of a running total of how much everything costs. And you also see that the price changed to $40 by changing the name because that name is a little bit longer in each character cost a few pennies. First three costs are kind of fixed because this has to do with the material that you use, the height and width of the panel. But as we scroll down, you can see every little operation is itemized and including the Acme Electronics here. That's a little more of a cost from the rvproject.com. And if we actually come back and delete this, we can see that our cost has dropped down to $34 because we no longer have that particular machining operation. And another thing you want to pay attention to is tool changes. Here we're doing good. We have one tool change. And sometimes in more complex panels, we may have two, three, and four tool changes. And it all depends on things like engraving, how wide the engraving is, and a bunch of other things. So you should try to minimize these tool changes if you can because each one is, you know, a buck and a half. So that's one place where you can save some money. And so this is a running total. So as you're changing your panel or designing the panel, come back here and look at this every once in a while and see where you're at. So you can make any other changes you wish. If you come in here and click on the panel itself, you see that we're aluminum anodized black. We can go natural, gold, red, blue, green, or bronze colors as well. Although black is at least expensive. And we can select different types of panels, anodized chromated, brushed anodized aluminum, raw aluminum, which is not a guarantee that it won't have scratches on it. And this is more designed for things like the shims that I made that can have a scratch. Uh, powder coating, and finally, perspex, which is kind of like an acrylic. Thicknesses can vary from one half millimeter to four millimeter, although some of the materials are not available in all the thicknesses. You can do edge machining, so, for instance, if we want to have a 45 degree bevel on the front edge, we can do so. A couple other things I need to point out is every one of these objects are referenced at the center. And in some of my panels, I group some of the objects. For example, if I drag a box and snap, it will surround these two objects. And then I can select grouping. And you'll see that it's grouped because these turn green and then we have an extra red one in the center. This one we left on group, and if I wanted to move it, I can move it. This, if I want to move it, the group of two moves. And I typically leave grouped items because it's simply easier to make changes later if I have to. But in some situations, you may have to remove the grouping to make the changes. But let's say you need to put these closer together. Click on ungroup, and then you can put them closer together. I need to point out is... This square is designed to hold a rocker switch, the press end type. And if you wanted to add another one, and of course you could copy this as well. And when you add a cutout like this, by default, the corners are rounded. And the reason for that is the tool actually, as it goes through and cuts this out, this is the radius of the tool itself. And of course, that's not going to work very well if you're trying to push a switch in because you're going to want the whole square uh, like I have here. And so simply all you do is double click on this object again. You just take the corner radius down to zero and you'll see now that it does a cutout in the corners. So you have a square and that's not going to show because the front bezel 
of the rocker switch is going to cover that. And some of the other things that you'll see on some of my panels sometimes have a engraving like this and I will say do not produce. When that happens this engraving turns blue. I'll often mark the outline of the part. For example, say I group this, and then we want to copy that, and then instead of paste, it says insert, which is kind of odd. Let's say I put two switches together, and we'll pretend this hole isn't there. This outline allows me to put the switches to the point where they don't touch each other, the front bezels. If I just put it in here without knowing where the boundary was, we could very well overlap on the front bezel of the switch, and you don't want to do that. So if you see the blue outline in one of my panels, that's what that's for. And when it goes to production, it will not be produced. And you can see a warning here even. It says, warning this front panel contains elements which will not be produced. So that's just a little handy way for me to lay out the panel. And since it takes some time to do all this work, I just leave it in. And I don't want to go through a whole tutorial on how to create a panel. This is more of a tutorial on how to order a panel. But if you want to create one, just practice with it because until you hit that order button, you know you're not going to order it. Anyway, I'm hoping that this tutorial will help you that have had questions. So thanks for watching.